So we hide bits of ourselves, and then we start, they start to come to light and we notice them. It's a bit like a serpent over there. What was that? Oh, nothing. You know, it's gone somewhere back around your psyche. Somewhere. What was that? No, no, it's not there. And then all of a sudden the conscience says, no, it was there. And then we turn to face it and go, oh, yeah, like I see what I'm doing. Right? And once you see what you're doing, you're starting to be, you, the unconscious come into subconscious. Kind of subconscious, we know we have these patterns, and these patterns kind of disturb us. We know we're really a liar and a cheat about a whole lot of different things, but, you know, everybody is, so it's okay. But the conscience is kind of like the soul starting to shine more deeply on that and saying, hey, this is actually blocking us from fully expressing. And actually, it's illusion anyway, like you're a cheat because you feel like everybody else is cheating, so I may as well, and by the way, my brother stole my truck anyway, and you know, like, so we've all got these stories. So when the soul's shining, it shines like conscious awareness, and it's like, I wish it would go away, like, I can't get on with my life anymore, because now there's like, there's the sun shining on everything, it's like a fucking camera saying, like, you just did that, you just did that, you just did that. So when the soul is really starting to be active, it's annoying to the personality. Often the personality will just go get drunk to get rid of that voice so that it can then do whatever it wants and, you know, like we all have these patterns and strategies. So when you come into a soul field in the field of consciousness, you don't just have one camera on you all the time. Now you've got like 40 cameras shining, you know, like intensely. And, <laughs> and then on Friday when they learn how to turn that into a magnifying glass, they're like burning, we're burning shadow. We're in the fires together. The group field is a fire. The fire of solar consciousness. So everything starts to becoming like aware and you become self-conscious about things. And that self-consciousness allows you to put your awareness and your attention on them. But if your attention is just coming from your superego, it'll be like judging, or good or bad or something else. But that doesn't get anywhere. It's not a question of good or bad. It's a question of what dramas are these bits of me playing out? Are they playing out an abandonment drama? Are they playing out a power drama? Are they playing out an emotional insecurity drama? Like, well, what are they playing out? Because whatever they are, it's not real. Like, that's the fast path. Whatever is going on, it's not that I'm bad. I don't buy the biblical original sin thing. It's not that something's wrong, like now I have to have a drama with you because I feel emotionally abandoned and we, you know, talked in the kitchen the other day and now you're not talking to me and so now I have to have a big drama with you and like tell you about my feelings, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not that. It's like, what's the story? There's a story in me. And that story is a lie. It's a fucking lie. Like, because it's not, it's an experience. It's a phenomena and it's a real experience. But there's no truth in the story. Okay, there's no real truth in it. It's just a way of moving energy so that that energy can kind of release some of its tension. <coughs> like that's what addictions and so on are. So when we start to become aware and surrender to the group soul and to our own soul, we say, actually, I'm not bad. I can trust this space enough to go belly up. Like in other words, whatever's in me, it's okay. Come to the surface. This is what you were saying. I want to know where you go. We all go places. We all have dull spots in our psyche. Well, when we go that, we call that going into your moon. Astrologically, we call that going into your moon. It's like you're in your sun, shining, soul shine, great. You're in your personality, like here I am, it's my socks, you know, and then you're in your moon, which is like, hmm. You've gone somewhere where you don't even really know that you've gone. Some little habit or pattern, like, oh, I'm going to get my bunkie. You know, like, <laughs> I really like Vegemite. <laughs> it's all Vegemite! I just love Vegemite! <laughs> you know, like, but, and, and they often sell, you know, center around food. Like, I don't have the right soy milk, you know? It's like, like my whole world won't work unless there's, there's no soy milk. You know, and of course, a part of us is like bashing a spoon, but we're being, you know, we're just like, I'm just wondering whether we have any soy milk. <laughs> but that's not what's really going on. Underneath, it's like, where is the soy milk? <laughs> I'm panicking, you know? Uh, or, you know, like, you know, something's out and the people can get really OCD around this, like, oh, my altar, something shifted, you know, like the whole pattern of the universe is changing. So this is our moon, like where we go, 
when we're, we're really insane, right? We're just comforting ourselves through some repetitive activity. You know, it's obvious that someone's OCD. We should have a confession of all of our OCD stuff, you know, like I've got to get down the steps before the toilet stops flushing, or like, you know. <laughs> sometimes on long trips, I click my teeth between, you know, lampposts for some, <clears throat> some reason, I don't know why. But our body is used to doing stuff, and our emotional body is used to doing stuff to kind of comfort us. It's, a, it's an unconscious comforting mechanism for the psyche. And it's normally, you know, it goes back to like something happened and we, it, we didn't feel good. Maybe, remember, there's two ways that you create these subpersonalities or blank spots. One is if a piece of your eye gets stuck back there in development. And the other is if a piece of your eye disassociates. So if you have some trauma, then a piece of your eye disappeared. And so now you don't even know about the trauma but sometimes that trauma, you know, shows itself in random activities, like clicking your teeth between lampposts or, you know, some uh, your version of that. So going back and looking for those is to start to feel like, where is our moon? And what's our moon doing? And what's the dark side of our moon? Like, what's underneath our patterns and behaviors and our little panic attacks that are going on inside us that we're not letting anyone see? Where do you go to, my lovely, when you're alone in your head? 